The guests we have today are Bart Stein and Anthony Cafaro, and both of them, um, like I said um, earlier, worked together on a company named Stamped. Um, before that, they um, were at Google together, and that's where they met. And now they're, of course, on this venture sub. I think we're going to have a great 45 minutes together. So I'd encourage you to pay attention, but also be involved, because they're going to want to get some responses from you. Thank you. Basically, uh, we're going to pre present this deck that we, we uh, pitched to raise money from Coastal Ventures. And the, the deck we, we made was for an idea that was somewhat different than SUP. Uh, so I'm going to do that. Uh, if you guys have questions, you can jump in. But most of this would be me actually presenting it and telling you why we made the decisions we made in the pitch deck. Uh, and then at the after that, I'm going to bring up the feedback form. All of you guys were forced to download SUP, so thank you for that. Um, and you all used it for a couple weeks on and off. And to be totally honest, I actually haven't really looked at the results from the survey. And so Anthony and I are going to do that, sort of like reading mean tweets about yourself. We're going to read it live. Uh, and it should be pretty fun. And I'm really hoping that part of the uh, discussion today will be more interactive. And I love to actually have people raise their hands and tell me more stuff about the product. So to start, let's go through this deck. Um, see if this works. OK, cool. So one thing, I didn't design this deck. Anthony did. So I'm lucky to have someone very talented in visual design. But one of the, the key themes in the presentation that I've learned over the years, so I, did, I raised money for a bunch of other, another company called Stamped, is making presentations really simple. Uh, venture capitalists do not have much attention. Uh, they, they see lots of pitches lots of, lots of times. And so making things as simple as possible really helps things. So for SUP, which ended up originally called look -see, we literally started our presentation with a simple sentence which is that we wanted to turn anyone's phone into your eyes on the ground. And so the idea was we have all these phones in people's pockets. We wanted to turn them, turn them into people's live video cameras when they wanted them to. And to get the imagination of Silicon Valley, uh, we told the venture capitalists that our inspiration was sci-fi, which was true. Um, we had, there's three movies in particular that we thought SUP at the time looks to was really similar to, which was this idea of, you know, has anyone seen Being John Malkovich, where you can jump into John Malkovich's eyes at any moment? Or in The Dark Knight, where he turns all the cell phones in Gotham into uh, cameras that he can use to see, find the Joker. Or recently, we got, we got very lucky that the movie Her had like just come out. And it was actually like a, there's a scene in it where he's literally being told by Scarlett Johansson like what to show her on a live video camera. And so all of those things ended up being really relevant to what we were doing. And again, this is all about trying to capture imagination and get people thinking that we're building something really sort of futuristic. At, at the end of the day, venture capitalists are trying to back ideas they think are kind of weird, kind of crazy. And so the more weird and crazy your idea seems, the actual better your pitch tends to go. So this, is the, this was the setup. And then we just jumped right into what the product was. So again, let me caveat. The original product we pitched to Costa was very different than what you guys all used on SUP. So I'm going to show it to you guys now. This is the original uh, vision of what SUP was. So the idea was basically going to be that it was a map. So you'd go onto a map, and it was called look -see, And the idea was essentially what you guys experienced with stuff, but is a very different perspective. So you drop a pin on a map and say, you want to see something. So this is a map of New York. So let's say you want to see a street art exhibit in New York. You could say, OK, I want to get a look -see of that. Turn that on volume on. And so you could select a time period. So you could say, I want someone to show me a few minutes of live video of an art exhibit in New York. And it actually would cost money, which was another big difference. So the idea was you'd actually pay someone to show you the live video. And someone who was near there would get a request. So someone who's near this thing would find out that they wanted to see uh, street art. And then you'd find out. It's sort of like an Uber-style interface of like finding someone close by. And then this is the part that's the most similar to stuff, which is essentially once it actually began, um, you would actually this person's filming video for you at the Banksy Street Art Exhibit, and you're telling them which way to move. And so it's literally just like having a, video, a live video camera anywhere in the world. That was the pitch to Kosla. What if you could see live video of anything in the world, any, any place? So it's just you're seeing the person move forward. It's timed. It was a two-minute timer, not a 10-second timer back then. Um, and so this is how it would all work. How's it? That's basically, that was how the product worked. Um, and so we showed that. <laughs> and then we talked a lot about how we would actually price all this stuff. So again, the idea back then was it's a marketplace where you can get someone to show you a look-see, you pay them, and you could use it for lines at bars, 
for uh, street art, for traveling, for hotels, for real estate. It was a much more of a utility type of idea. And this, like, sh this is basically the part of the presentation where we try to show we were smart and put a bunch of math and weird things on a map. Uh, and this was basically explaining how that all worked. So then another big important, important part of a presentation is in technology is always talking about how your idea can be bigger than just your idea. And so in our mind, we were talking about the look-see as this product where you do this, but we tried to think about what, how it could expand as a platform. And so another big thing to always think about when you're pitching things is, what is your, how is your idea going to grow with the market? So we're talking about here about things like wearables and Google Glass or drop cams and other devices beyond the phone. And so we spent a lot of time with Kosla talking about how our product could actually expand beyond just an initial iPhone app and how our product was scalable. Because so you think about Twitter, uh, Facebook, all these social services, they all started as one thing, but they really grow over time. And VCs really want to feel that that's a possibility with your product as well. Uh, and then this was sort of like, this is like the market research section. In general, <laughs> I've never seen a VC presentation have much market research and have VCs really care. They kind of just nod off during this part. Because at the end of the day, if, you're, if your presentation is really being backed by lots of market research, it means that your idea is like too obvious. <laughs> Like if it's so obvious why this thing is gonna work, uh, it doesn't really, it's probably a lot of people have thought of it and are doing something. So this is just like a quick slide we talked about. And the real thing that we actually talked about a lot was how less that the current market made a lot of sense for this idea and more that if you see like one billion users are gonna have LTE by 2018, it was much more about how our idea we thought was skating to where the puck was going in terms of having faster cell phones that were on streaming and could stream things faster and better video cameras and having software that allowed you to do this much faster. Uh, and so all of that was more about a future context than actually the current context. And then this is the slide. So this is, I didn't actually give much background on ourselves. <laughs> this is the two of us. And so this is the part of the presentation where we talked about why we were qualified for this idea. Um, you know, so a little, a little bit about myself. I, I don't want to just talk about myself, but I did start a company called Stamped, uh, which was a social recommendations company uh, that was acquired by Yahoo. It, it raised a bunch of venture <laughs> capital from uh, Bain Capital, Google Ventures. So um, this is really intended to tell Costa, like I kind of know what I'm doing, but even though I don't. Uh, and this is what supposed to give me some credibility. And then Anthony was at Google with me. He was our lead designer at Stamped, and he was lead designer at Yahoo. And this is like sort of the credibility establishing slide. When you do a team slide, though, it's actually, this was a little light, but it was actually more important to really, if you're a first-time entrepreneur, which most people at some point are first-time entrepreneurs, uh, you want to talk more about what, why your experience is relevant to the idea, because you may not have sold a company or started at Google and all this stuff. You want to talk about why you have some experience that's relevant to what you're doing. And that's, again, the, ours is, this is talking about our network and like who we've raised money from in the past. So we were trying to sell kind of our credibility, but a lot of times you're trying to sell sort of more uh, what your unique skill set is and why it's relevant to the idea. Um, and then the last part of a presentation, this is the one that I see most entrepreneurs get wrong. So I'm going to talk for like a little bit about this. And so I get, you know, people email me a lot about looking for investment opportunities and things like that. And the craziest thing is that a lot of entrepreneurs don't actually ask, tell you what they're asking for. So they'll make a whole deck about what their idea is, but like there's one big part missing, which is what are they trying to raise money, why they need money, how much money, and what are they going to do with the money? And I think a lot of people don't think to put that in the deck because maybe it seems presumptuous or maybe they don't really know, like a lot, we don't really know either, but you have to like make something up. So here, like, we actually put, we are seeking, this is the last slide of our deck, and this is we're asking for this amount of money. We want to hire four engineers. We're going to launch, again, all of this ended up being completely wrong and changed, but we're going to launch the, on these dates, try to hit these timelines, and this is how long this money is going to last. It's going to take us 18 to 24 months. I cannot tell you how much a VC appreciates that because it actually says, wow, these guys actually know what they're doing, and they actually have a specific reason for the money. A lot of times also, a VC will say, this is a great idea. So you, know, you pitch an idea and they'll say, it's a great idea, but why do you need money for it? Just go, you know, go raise some like a couple, 20K or try to like put together some debt, take out some loans and try it out. Like why do you actually need money to make it work? And so you have to really spend a lot of time thinking about that and making sure it makes sense. And so that, that was it. That's the whole presentation. So let me give you a little bit of information about what happened. So we pitched this. We ended up raising the money, um, and then we started working on the product, the one we, saw, the, we set out to work on, and we realized that it would be really hard <laughs> to get people to pay for this type of a product, and that actually, if we, once we started using it with our friends in a, in a prototype trial period, that 
it was actually more fun just doing it for fun. So we started building it and we were like, I actually just getting look-sees at Anthony's apartment or when he's in the East Village in New York and it's kind of interesting. So if you think about Twitter, Twitter started off as a really simple, free, stupid tool for people to share little like interesting tidbits with each other and now it's used for that but it's also used for journalists breaking news and uh, you know media brands promoting their movies and so we sort of thought why not actually instead of making it a paid marketplace where people pay to see live video things why not go broader and make it completely free and make it sort of silly and fun and make it more about sort of social seeing what your friends are up to and if we get enough users doing it that way build out the other use cases where you could sup uh, you know, a bar and have someone who works at the bar, someone who's near the bar pick up and show you live video. Kind of basically make the look-see idea a feature as opposed to the entire product. And so we ended up going back to Kosla uh, and basically telling them that we want to change the idea a little bit, rename the company to sup on the, on the uh, trend of making it a sillier, stupider concept. Uh, and we did that. And so we ended up doing that. Uh, building the product, we have a team of seven people, including Anthony and I, and we're in New York City, and we built SUP and we launched it about two months ago, and you guys all had the chance to use it, and I'm gonna go to that in a second, but I do, I do wanna take a chance to answer, does anyone have any questions about this deck, this presentation? <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little weird, so yeah, sure. Right, exactly, yeah, it's good. that was one of the problems. But yeah, so yeah, you would get ratings. The idea was literally like a marketplace where people get ratings. You can say, that person's really good at showing like, uh, at showing up parks, like it's really interesting. They have really good like, good cinematography skills. And but the idea was you realize is that it's really hard to, unlike so Airbnb or Uber, it's a relatively easy to assess the quality. Like if you, someone can be like, the driver like ran through a red light or like we got an accident. Like, and you're like, oh, that driver's not a good driver on Uber. It's hard to like, we wouldn't see the videos because they're all live. So it would be very hard to ascertain whether the ratings are actually like valid or not. Like how do you know whether the video is good? Like is the person telling the truth or not? That became a huge thing we talked about when we were thinking about the idea as to whether like it would work or not. Uh, yeah. Sure, so yeah, that's a very good question. I left out a lot. So this was not, it's not like we just called up Coastal Ventures and we're like, hey, we have an idea, can we come pitch you? It doesn't work like that, unfortunately. Um, we had met with about, we had had about four different meetings with Coastla at different points over like two months probably, or maybe a little shorter, where you, it's like, it's sort of like dating. You like have a one on the first date and you like see if they like you, if you like them, and then the next time you go a little bit more serious and it gets more serious and more serious, now you're meeting the parents, which is like you go meet the entire team. Uh, and so this was like the culmination of like a bunch, everyone in the room already knew what the idea was. So what this is actually really is the chance for all the partners at Coastal Ventures to sit around and like have a live debate with you. And as much of the meeting is about what you just said, which is the after part of it. So you give the pitch and then they ask you lots of questions. They say, that's not gonna work, that's stupid, or like how, is it, how are you gonna get users or all that type of stuff. And then you just go back and forth. And by the way, you have no idea how you're doing. <laughs> like, so like at the end of it, we walk out and we're like, I, they could call me and tell me that was the stupidest thing they've ever seen, or they could call me and tell me they're in, I would have no idea. You just, it's very hard to read, because they're, also they don't all think the same way. So like there might be six partners in the room and you have no idea if they're gonna, they're not all gonna agree, they have to vote or something. So and, and some bring up very granular points, like how are you gonna get their credit card information? Yeah. While others talk very high level, like what are the seven deadly sins that this product brings out in people? Yeah. So it's kind of, you kind of have to be like very like on, like on point. And so after this, one in particular, specifically, a lot of the conversation was around like how do you get people to try it out? Um, which is like kind of the easiest question to ask of any product. Um, so it's sort of like, with this one, the interesting part, the, with this idea, the interesting angle was that kind of the demand side and the supply side ran into each other as a marketplace. So unlike Uber, the drivers probably don't request rides very often, maybe they do, but very rarely. And in this, you could argue that if your people were filming, they also, you could sign up people to film and then they'd also be people who would request video. And that was sort of our answer for that question, uh, which, I don't know, I don't know if it made sense, but it worked. Uh, um, uh, any other questions? I can't, yeah, uh, you. So um, you discussed a few different models of free versus, you know, 
Yeah. Smart guy, yeah. That was, so that's a good idea. We talked a lot about that. Um, so the, the challenge with that model is like just truly complexity. Like at the end of the day, it may have, wor it may have worked. I mean, it's something we still talk about a lot. Like it's, like a, it's more like a freemium model also. Like there's basically ways to use it for free. Like maybe you can get 10 seconds of video for free, but if you go beyond that, the challenge is just like, at the end of the day, all pro products need to be simple, as simple as you can possibly make them. And so it's just anytime you add something, uh, one of the things, like, I remember I, I worked for Marissa Meyer at Yahoo, and she always used to say, like, anything you add to a product is just, like, take a point off, because, like, you just made it worse. So, like, we actually have a jar in our office. It's called the adding jar. And whenever we think about adding something, we put a dollar in it, because like, we're trying to make ourselves not do that. Because it's, it's the com intellectual overhead of a product, the more you add, it just gets harder for people to use. So our worry with that is it's just too confusing for people to figure out. But it's not a bad idea. We thought a lot about it. Um, I'm going to do like two more questions. I do want to get to the feedback section. So two more questions. <laughs> two, has, does anyone else have any questions? Uh, yeah. Have you concerned about the Oh, yeah. I was very concerned. Um, they reacted very well. I mean, at the end of the day, um, when you're doing a seed level investment, so we're not, also, we didn't change the idea to like a fashion company. It wasn't like a total like, you know, 180. I mean, we are in the same space, and it was, I think that's, it's very hard, I think if we had raised money and then just like threw it all away in like two months without even doing it, that would have been a harder conversation. But I think it almost in some ways, smart venture capitalists know that like if you're not changing your idea, you're probably doing something wrong, honestly, because like you have to change somewhat. We, you know, we could argue that we probably change, we maybe change it too much, that could be an argument, but I'd always rather be on the side of being too experimental than not experimental enough. Because at the end of the day, I can tell you, like, you don't know what's going to work. Like, you got to try stuff. So, like, it's, I think that was the, un, if you go under that, like, uh, wrapper, like, no one's ever going to be unsupportive of someone who wants to try something different. All right, one more question, or, uh, yeah. I Sorry. Think about time and implementing the change, like, getting the other engineers into that, like, another pitch process. Like yeah, <laughs> that's the hard, yeah. So that, um, it is very, it's sort of similar, right? You're, you're trying to pitch people to come work for you, and it's, it's a little bit different, uh, but you kind of use the same themes and the same, like, tools as what you have here. But a lot of it is just your network. So, like, I have, you know, I went to Brown uh, University, and, like, two of our engineers went to Brown, who I knew from Brown, and another one ended up being a friend of them. It's just, like, a, it's a lot of just, like, networking. Um, so, like, this is like the most valuable network in the world, by the way. Like I built my entire career on my Brown University network. Like I, my first company stamp, we raised money from a Bain Capital partner who went to Brown. And then I ended up hiring engineers from Brown for Stamped. And I hired engineers from Brown for uh, Sup. And like, so keep in contact with everyone. Cause like, and even the people you're like, a lot of these people were not like my close friends, but they're people that I like just stayed in touch with over the years. So this is like the best network you have, uh, for sure. All right, I'm gonna just, I'll, I'll, you can actually have to end of class. I wanna get to the feedback, so I'll, let's go to the feedback. So this will end up happening. We ended up um, making SUP and putting it out there. Um, and you all used it. <laughs> so this is gonna be fun. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have, I, so I'll give you the honest truth is I looked at this when it was like 50 responses and now it's like 280. So I have a little bit of a sense. I know where it's going. Um, and so what I want to do is I'm going to go through these answers. And so one of the things that the professor talks about is, you know, a lot of people give you lots of advice about how to get funded, how to raise, you know, how to build a product, how to launch it, how to get people on it. But it's not as much advice that people realize is that once you launch it, it's not really over. It's honestly, that's like when the hardest part starts because you have no idea whether it's going well or not. In like very rare cases, you know, once in a while you get like an Instagram that just launches and just takes off. But like someone told me a good quote recently, it was like every successful startup is two years old. Like very few startups just launch and take off. Like most of them launch and go through lots of learning uh, struggles and growing pains and have to figure it out. And so what you're gonna see me and to some extent Anthony do right now is actually, I'm just gonna read these and I'm gonna tell you like pretty raw, this is like the first time I've read them, like what I'm thinking and what this stuff means to me. And I'm gonna try to, if I have like follow-ups about them, I'm gonna see if anyone wants to give me any color if they answer the question a certain way. So I'll start with the first question. <laughs> Would you have downloaded stuff if you weren't in this class? Uh, it's like 85% of you said no. 
Um, okay, so, so with this one, this one I'm actually not sure I asked the question the right way. Of course I'll say that. But, uh, so I'm not sure if I think people meant, like, if I meant, oh, you should, would you have downloaded it, like, would you have heard of it, or would you have downloaded it if you had heard of it? Assuming that it was the second one, because that makes me feel better, I think that makes sense. In general, though, that's not a very encouraging response regardless, because I think it shows that the overwhelming majority of you guys probably wouldn't have downloaded the app in some capacity. So that either means that you guys would have heard about it and not downloaded it, which is really bad, or you don't think you would have heard about it, um, which is also a problem. So those are two problems. So I don't, to be totally honest, that's a problem I have no idea how to solve, because that's like a core problem. <laughs> um, but that's something that's interesting. What I would like to do is actually follow up with someone about that and see if that was like, if I word the question right. So let's come back to that. Um, did you find stuff easy to understand and get started using? So it looks like 45% of you said yes, very easy. That's pretty good. 14% uh, said no, I was very confused. By the way, this is Anthony's fault, all of this, yeah, this yeah, part. Yeah. So he designed it. Uh, and 40% said it took a little while to get the hang of it. What do you think? I'm incredibly embarrassed, yeah. But I mean, the challenge is, like, our core idea is just flipping stuff on its head. Like, you're not taking your camera out and posting it. You're requesting someone else to post it, and then you're making it with them. So, like, it's just, like, it was hard to get references of what the proper UX is for that. So, like, getting feedback like this is good. Like, we're obviously not doing something right, so we should be trying more stuff and getting even more feedback. Right, so when I look at that one, I, like, am pretty sure that's bad. So, like, I don't need to, like, because that's bad because you don't want more than half of your users to either say that it was confusing or it took them a little bit of, a little while. Because like we're not building like a robot. Like this should be pretty easy to use. It's like an app with like five buttons on it. So if we didn't get that right, like that's a problem. And so I think we're gonna have to go back and figure out how to make it a lot simpler. So that's like that's actually very valuable. All right, how many times have you used stuff since downloading it? So three weirdos use it every day. Um, I'd like to know who they, who they are. Uh, <laughs> Um, okay, 187 people, said, so 66% said a few times, and 32% said haven't used it since downloading it. That's, that's pretty good, actually. That's actually, so that's actually pretty good. So, uh, that went up a lot, I think. Yeah, I think when I first looked at that, that was lower. Um, so that actually gives me some hope. Uh, thank you. Um, so no, actually, what that actually shows, one of the things you also realize is that it's very hard to get people to do anything, on the, like, to download any app and do anything on it. So if you... I like you know worked at Google and worked at Yahoo. Like I can tell you, like even Twitter, for instance, struggles with. They have people download the app, and like most people just never use it again because they're like, I don't want to tweet, and I don't know what I'm looking at. So like the fact that 66% of you actually gave it more than one try, although it sounds like a low bar, is actually pretty good, which means that there's something in the app that is at least intriguing enough to try again. And so what that tells me is that we need to just be faster at like making sure that your second experience is better than your first experience. Like, may think about what are the first couple of experiences that users are gonna have and really hone in on that. Like, 30% saying they didn't use it again since downloading it is actually, like, what I would expect. I mean, we're not, again, do you think about it, like, people think of an app and they're like, everyone should use it. But you go into a drugstore and there's like 30 shampoos, you don't buy every shampoo. It's fine if you download an app and don't wanna use it. That's probably like a normal product. So this I would actually take some encouragement from and try to figure out how we can get more people to try it a few times than keep using it, which would be the next question. And then the three people, I, I didn't, yeah, I gotta figure out who those people are and talk to them after class. Um, okay, would you recommend SUP to a friend? Damn it, we have two votes, man. <laughs> uh, someone just vote right now and make a yes. Uh, so 50% said no, 49% said yes. So that's not terrible. Um, that's, so this is what's called like a viral coefficient. So like this is like the sign of like if I spend money to market sub to a user and I get a user on the product, do I have confidence that user will tell somebody else? Is my marketing dollar going to actually spread? Um, sounds like I have a 50% confidence, which is okay. It, it should be better because you actually really want is like if you bring on one user, you want that one user to bring on like multiple users, not just one person. Um, it's a little bit of a weird, what I'm thinking right now is it's a little weird that that's so close when the top one was like no, 80% said no, so I don't know what that quite means. Actually, all right, let's stop for a second. Wh who, who said that they, who answered that first question saying no and what did they mean when they said they wouldn't download it if they weren't in this class? There we go. I said no because I, no, I wouldn't have known what. You wouldn't have known. Is that, is that what, who else said that? <laughs> oh, wow, okay. 
Told you. We're back. <laughs> no, uh, okay, interesting. Okay, so most people thought I was asking. So, that, so here's a good lesson in customer feedback is that you have to really, I don't know, I didn't answer the, ask the question. It's not what I actually meant. I was actually asking the question, trying to, be, trying to get a sense of if you heard about the product and knew what it was, would you actually even try it if you weren't being forced to by your professor? Because I want to just get like an initial value proposition sense. So I may have to re-ask that question some other later point, but that's interesting. So that makes more sense as to why, because if 86% of you said no to that, I would be confused as to why 50% of you would actually recommend it to a friend, because that would seem kind of counterintuitive. That's good. Um, okay, which of the following things did you like about stuff the best? 57% uh, said the fact that it's live video. That's good. 23% said being able to tell my friends what you're supposed to do. That's good. 13% said nothing. <laughs> uh, that's good. Uh, and uh, <laughs> so that that sort of the, so one of the things we're doing right now is we're trying to figure out um, what to do next. Like what's what's the next version of the product? And one of the things you think about a lot is what do you retain and what do you cut? And so the fact that the overwhelming majority of you guys said the fact that it's live. Um, shows that like the core sup experience of like seeing a friend and swiping and telling them to move is like somewhat working in the sense that you guys like people like that. So when we think about how to make it better, we want to try to figure out how do we retain that and change other things. Which I can, by the way, we have an idea about that, which we can talk about maybe if we have time. But that's an interesting thing that sort of supports a little bit of what we're thinking about. Um, should I go for? Should I ask someone who said what the nothing answer? Yeah, definitely. All right, who said, who's brave enough to tell me why, who said nothing? I, I don't care, you can go for it. I've heard worse things in my life. All right, there we go. Uh, there's so many other things that do all the same things that you do that it's kind of hard to like make stuff to stick. Like we have like Snapchat and FaceTime, all these other platforms that we use to share videos. Yeah. So like what's the switch that makes the stuff the thing I use? So do you think that the fact that it's live is not enough of a twist? Because all those things just like so, like uh, Snapchat, Instagram, and all those things are essentially recorded content. I think the thing that makes it better is that it's cross platform. So for like FaceTime, I can only FaceTime Apple. Yeah. Interesting. So, but, but your biggest thing was essentially it didn't seem different enough to you. Yeah, it, everything else did sort of what it did in some capacity. Right. And do you remember? Do you use Snapchat? Yeah. Do you remember when you first heard of Snapchat? What seemed different to you about it? Uh, well, the fact that it basically first exists, it was the human aspect of like a picture message mixed with a twist of the email nature that it kind of knows what you're doing. Got it. Interesting. Yeah. So um, I would say that that's very good feedback. Uh, the, so Snapchat did benefit from that one simple thing that people could understand. The, the confidence that <coughs> whatever I send is basically. Right, and so what we were betting on is that the big difference for us was the, which is the live aspect. Is that if you think about all of social media, none of it's really live. But I agree, one of the tr struggles we have is that that's not as simple to understand uh, as something like Snapchat was, which is like disappearing messages. Although my counter argument to that would be a little bit that I'm not sure if I heard about that when someone told me that it would disappear, I would have initially thought that was actually like an interesting value proposition. There's a little bit of like a chicken and egg issue with those things, whether that actually was interesting because it was interesting or whether it was interesting because other people started using it, which we'll get to in a second. Actually, that's the next question. So this one I, I'm definitely curious about, because I said if you had to say one thing that you didn't like about stuff, which of the following would you pick? So this 28% this doesn't solve enough of a problem for me. That's, that's, like we, that's a core thing we have to figure out. Like how can we make it seem like it's solving a problem for you? But the 41% saying they don't have enough friends on it is very interesting to me. Because I'd like someone to explain what they meant about that. Because you're sitting in a room with, like, you guys are you guys not friends with each other? Or what's the, like, if you're sitting in a room with 300 students, and, like, why did you feel, who didn't feel like they had enough friends on it? So can someone tell me, like, what, what like, just elaborate, like, what, how that bothered them and why they felt like it was, was it too hard to get more friends on it? Did you not care enough to get friends on it? Uh, yeah, in the hat. Yep. Got it. Yeah. And did you try to convince any of your friends to download the app? Yeah. And it, it was it hard? It was harder to convince them rather than just that the app that we all have a 
even though sending a Snapchat is somewhat of a different thing. It's just, it's just easier. To, but it's not different enough. How do you usually, sorry, I'm getting real feedback, this is helpful to me. How do you actually usually can try to tell a friend to use an app? Do you like use and feature in the app like text and invite or do you just tell them? Like, usually I show it to them. And yep. Say, but a lot of the feedback I got was that it wasn't good enough. Yep. So I got to use the app that I Cool. And who else that thought they didn't have enough friends on it wants to tell me a little bit more about that? Oh, right there. Sorry. <laughs> yep. Do you think that you come back to apps that you try out two months later? Yeah. Interesting. That's really interesting. Yeah, I, I like always feel like I'm like so ADD that if I like download something, I don't, if I don't start using it instantly, I just delete it and never come back to it. But that's like interesting. That's very interesting. That's, yeah, we can keep going on this one because this one's very interesting to me. And you, I, I, you owe you a question. Yeah. So this is just my one. Okay. So you and you just don't care, you just don't want the personal interaction. You, you just want the you want them more just to know where you just want to talk to your you want the personal interaction. You don't care where he is. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. I mean, I think so. Again, it, it's like a bet. We're just making a bet that Snapchats are ultimately very interesting in their own right, but they're a different model. Like it's just for, there's two things that are primarily different about them. One is that it is a recorded piece of content that's just always going to be less intimate than actually like jumping into someone's eyes, controlling them, telling them what to move, and seeing live. The second is the, like the request model. So in Snapchat, uh, Devin sends you a Snapchat. In stuff, you could actually ask for something, and we think that's an interesting spin because at the end of the day, like all of social media is very sort of um, what's the word I'm looking for? Narcissistic. Like people just post stuff about themselves, and you don't. You're saying Devin wanted. You saying you wanted a Snapchat from Devin, but honestly, most of the Snapchats I get, I don't want. Like there's people sending them to me. And so like in stuff, you don't actually ever see content you don't want to see because you always ask for it. So like those two things, live and the request model, what we were betting would be differentiated enough to make it stand out. Um, so that's what that, but that, I mean, that's my, that would be like what, a, that doesn't mean you're wrong or that your feedback is invalid, but that's what our, our thinking is on that. Um, okay, we got lots of questions, sure. Yep. That was where we thought about the 10 second time limit. <clears throat> but if we made it 10 seconds, you would feel less, like even by accepting it, you wouldn't feel obligated. But I understand that's a very reasonable piece of feedback. Um, 
The only thing that we don't do well in the product, which is another thing we're thinking about, is that we don't even make it that easy for you to like tell someone to stop you, like if you're at a cool place. Like I think one of the, let me go to one of these questions. We, I, I asked this question, which is, um, would you be more likely to accept someone if you knew where they were? And it looks like most of you said yes, which is interesting to me because you're it's sort of like there's there's two pro, there's like two conflicting things there, which is that you're saying you don't want to accept the sup if you're at Yankee Stadium because you want to enjoy the game. But I feel like a lot of people actually want to sup you if you're at Yankee Stadium. And the current product, there's really no way to really know that. Like we don't make it easy. There's no location. There's no way of like posting anything that says you're at Yankee Stadium. And so. This to me is like an interesting one because this is like a, above all the things in this survey, I can go through the rest of it, like this is a pretty overwhelming majority and it gives me very clear direction that if we made it easy for users to know where other users were, they would be more likely to stop them. I don't know if they more likely, there's another, this is why user feedback is really hard by the way. There's another part of that question which is I don't know if they'd accept the subs, but at least maybe we get more subs being sent. Uh, we can keep going on the, uh, the friends, or we just, whatever. Hey, bar. <laughs> yeah, just say whatever anyone wants to ask, yeah. Still like going. Oh. Ten minutes. Okay. Yeah. So like going with that, like when I use social media, normally it's in it with the edit time and like I'm not doing anything else. So like if yeah. I'm walking across, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook or something like that, or with sup, like people are going to be requesting a sup yeah. exactly when you're like most busy or doing something that's very interesting. Yeah. Which is like when I'm least likely to want to take time away from that and do it. Right. Yeah. So that's a, that's an interesting problem. The other the reverse is it when you're bored and you're you're doing the least, you could request up to other people and they may be bored too. I mean, there's like a little bit of a matching up problem there, but that's, yeah, that's very valid feedback. Well, I uh, think we want to start surfacing people who are bored and are willing to accept it. Uh, we're just experimenting with how to do that. Like, is it a sup me button and say like anyone can sup me? Is it a status update? Is it like a photo preview? There's so many options. Um, all right, is there any more, question, more questions, comments? Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. If I want to share something with my friends, it's usually something interesting going on around me. Yeah. I, I would actually be more likely to share. Yeah, I think that's the thing is like <laughs> some people who are doing something interesting want to be left alone, but there's also lots of people who want to show that off. Like that's like the point of social media. So it does go back and forth in those different directions. Uh, let me just go to the next. This is what I want to talk about a little bit because this is also an interesting one, which is what is that most similar to in your mind? And 77% of you guys said Snapchat, which is, again, this is like a clear. It's like a clear data point. There's no confusion over the question. Like I can feel pretty confident. And this one is also like pretty interesting slash like concerning to me um, because we didn't actually want to build a Snapchat competitor, as you saw from the original deck. Um, like we really thought of Looksee and Sup as like a way to see interesting things around the world live. And I think through a mix of like execution and marketing mistakes, we actually ended up being like a Snapchat competitor. And that's and it's interesting that that it, clearly we are and like I think one of the things that I'm going to take from that and actually actionable feedback from user feedback from you guys is like how do we make this app feel less like a Snapchat competitor because we're not going to beat Snapchat at like the Snapchat game like it's just <laughs> they are like have way too many users and they're they have like killed that use case of like people are saying like I just want to send a silly photo or a video like we're trying to do is make it interesting to see live what your friend or other people that may be in interesting places are doing, which I still think is a differentiated use case. Like I don't, I don't know how you use Snapchat for that. Like I don't go on Snapchat and like see live what someone's doing at Yankee Stadium or what someone in, we actually have users all over the world on stuff already. We have users in Libya, in Iraq, in Russia, France, and it's actually pretty interesting if you can find those users. Like I've supped someone who was in Libya and it was like kind of crazy to just be like in an apartment in Libya. I've never, you know, when would I ever do that? Um, so I think part of what we're gonna do when we think, go back is like how do we make the product more about that and about seeing your friends when, they're, when they are actually doing something interesting. Sorry, we're gonna be bothering you at Yankee Stadium, whoever said that I can't find them. But, uh, but like that is actually, this is a very valid piece of feedback that I think I can really uh, take from it. Anthony actually had the idea of putting Google Street View in here because actually I'd rather be compared to that because like that is Street View is that voyeuristic element of like you use Street View to like see a random place and like obviously it's not really that interesting and most people don't use it that often but that was where we were going for and the fact that like 
nobody compared us to Twitter is like bad because at some level, again, I'm trying to, like I told you guys, I'm trying to make it more like Twitter in the sense that you use it for, with your friends or like you could use it with journalists. So this is a very interesting piece of feedback. Well, I mean, do you think, that actually, who, could, who thinks it's like Snapchat? Oh, everyone thinks it's like Snapchat. But who would want to talk about why they think it's like Snapchat? Um, OK, let's get a you. <laughs> The live portion of it. Yeah, exactly. And Do people use that? Sorry, I'm gonna interrupt you. Do people use the live video portion of Snapchat? Who raise your hand if you use it? <laughs> they wouldn't know that there's a lot. Who doesn't know there's a live portion of Snapchat? <laughs> there we go. Um, so you're savvy. You're smart. So yeah, there is a live portion of Snapchat that came out right around. Everyone's like, what the hell? I'm gonna everyone's like, I just increased Snapchat's user base. So like, uh, um, but uh, there is a live portion of Snapchat that just came out, that, but that's really much more of a person-to-person -person FaceTime, and it's buried in the product. Um, and I don't think that it's the core usage of Snapchat. Just like you know, Instagram has Instagram Direct now. Who uses Instagram Direct? <laughs> wow. OK. Um, Instagram has like a Snapchat-like competitor in Instagram. I, I don't think that that. It's interesting, though. Um, all right. Uh, we have five minutes. Oh. Okay. Uh, you, you so there's another let, question. You didn't let her finish. Oh, sorry. I didn't let you finish the question. Um, sorry. I do that all the time. Yeah. I think when you um, change your marketing campaign, you need to ask more clearly and like even like just basic like look and color scheme of it, the yeah. name. <coughs> that is what Snapchat is. Yeah. If you were trying to be like more. Like look see. Right, I think that's a mistake we made. Um, I think we were too, like I said, we thought it looked and we said, let's make it more fun so we can get users for free. But we went like too far. This is the constant struggle of entrepreneurship is making the right balance decisions, but. Who would we, use look right now to drop, a, to drop a pin and pay for live video? Like three people. These guys. <laughs> You're the three guys who also use stuff every day? No, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> All right, so yeah, um, let's have five minutes. Let's, I think we should just keep going with questions. Uh, I can stop reading. I was going to read the funny feedback. Should I go? I read one. Let me read a couple. Let me just read a couple of the actual. <laughs> it's a very brave class. Um, <laughs> so people actually wrote like open feedback. So let me try to find something that's interesting. Bart was reading this last night and crying in the hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like this one. Uh, oh, no, let's see. That one's like almost too mean. Um, yeah, let's see. Let's try to find one. Um. <laughs> this one's interesting, actually. A audio might be also a very attractive, important feature to add on it. Um, somehow I find there is an app named MyPy, which is very popular in China right now, having the same features with stuff. I have no idea whether this is a coincidence or not, but international people do like it. What's, I've never heard of that app. Who, does anyone know who that app, what that app is? MyPy? All right, we'll have to follow up with someone there. Um, let's see. All right, this is good. Live video is difficult. Something that I think people love about popular social networks, Vine, Instagram, Snapchat, is the fact that you can cut and edit videos. Also, often people aren't doing anything interesting when you sub them, and if you were doing something interesting, I wouldn't want to be bothered by a sub. So, okay, I'll give you a little sneak peek, and this is going to uh, lead me to the next thing, which is we are working on a 2.0 of sub. Uh, which will give you the ability to potentially save a sub video and publish it. Uh, one of the things that we think, and from reading all this stuff, is that the real core problem with, I think, the app right now, if there is like a core problem, is that you open the app and there's nothing to look at if you don't have enough friends on the service. So if people who are doing subs, we do have actually a pretty active user base, even though it's still small right now. There's actually lots of people who love the app and use it pretty constantly. What if we could let them actually take us up and save it and publish it? So I have two things I want to say before the time runs out, which is one, if you'd like to be a beta user of the new stuff, um, email me uh, your email address. And my e I'll give you my email address. It's bart, B-A-R-T, uh, at uh, look, L-O-O-K, dash, C, S-E-E, dot com. It would be an easier way to like email that out or something, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
but please email me. I'm looking for like 50 students who are on iOS or Android. I'd love to have some of you guys involved and actually beta test a new product. Um, and then the second thing is related to that, which is this last question. I tried to see if anyone was interested in that. And it looked like it was, this one is, so I said, which of the feature would you have to pick one? Most of you guys wanted audio, which is, I think, a data point we may ignore, because I still feel strongly that we shouldn't have audio, because there's like the whole complexity and weirdness around that. But this ability to save and rewatch subs was 19%. So there's some interest in that. Who, let me just do like a raw poll. Who would care? Who would actually open the app and check to see if a sub was recorded? Like, raise your hand. It's about 19%. Yeah. All right. These guys are honest. Um, interesting. So that's basically what we're doing. We're up to a 2.0 that's going to take a lot of this feedback, uh, double down on some of that stuff. Um, as one last lesson I'll leave you with is feedback is really helpful and also really hard. Um, like, getting feedback. You don't know what to ignore. You don't know what to take. Like I could go back to the office on Monday and tell people that we're going to build audio because 35% of you guys did it. And that could be the wrong decision. It could be the right decision. But this is all very important stuff for us. Uh, and thank you very much for bearing with me. And thank doing you, Mark. And uh, I really appreciate the time and the opportunity to come talk to such an incredible audience about what's going on. Um, my path as an angel is really, I view myself